Hey everyone, it's James from Just Understanding Data and Send Pioneer, and today what we're going to look at is how you can effectively use web scraping uh, with Python and Beautiful Soup. There's a range of reasons why you should learn this. Uh, one is it's great to be able to pass HTML content, extract elements, specific keywords, um, and also we're going to be talking about how you can um, specifically uh, scrape multiple web pages and how you can fit that data into a pandas data frame and finally extracting it from CSV. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to do our module imports. So you'll need Python, uh, pandas, beautiful soup and requests uh, for this. Uh, and the way that you can do those once you have those installed is just import those inside of a Python script or inside of Jupyter Notebook. And then what you're going to look to do is uh, firstly use the requests library and do a get request on a specific um, URL. And what this will give you back is a response, uh, which is specifically a request response. And you can see that we've got a response uh, 200, uh, which means that we've actually been able to reach that other web page. Um, if you want to get the status code out, just do response status code. And you can see if we just print this, that we also get back a 200. So basically this means that the page is accessible and we can get some content from that. Now that we have the page, the thing that we want to do is we want to access the content of the page. If we have the response object and we do response.content, we'll get the HTML content, which looks like this. And it will come as a stream of bytes. And you can see that it's a stream of bytes because we have the B um, with a string afterwards. However, if we do a HTML, uh, if we do response.text, then we get back uh, the HTML as a string, not necessarily a byte string. Um, so now that we have the HTML in a request response, let's actually build our first parser. So we're going to use uh, beautiful soup. So you can just do for uh, beautiful soup, and then you pass in the response.content like this, and then you do HTML.parser. Now, when we now look at soup, you'll now see that we have this HTML data, but we also have a range of other methods uh, that you can access on a soup object. And you can do that using help uh, on soup, or you can also read the beautiful soup documentation. Um, what's really good about beautiful soup is that it does have a lot of these helper methods on, um, and that allows us to specifically extract information from HTML pages very, very easily. So for example, we can do soup title, we can do soup dot um, like text, for example, uh, and you can see, for example, this here needs some level of cleaning um, because you've got lots of new lines, etc., that we might not necessarily want to have. So that is a way of being able to build a parser using Beautiful Soup. Now, in this example, we've used a, uh, like a job search in Indeed, uh, where the job will be data scientist and the area will be London. And if we just have a look at this URL, we can see that there are, uh, let's try, let's actually do a different one. So I'm gonna say data scientist London. So we can see here, when we look at a, a web page, there's specific elements and bits that we might wanna extract. The best way to do this is to just right click in Google Chrome or in a Brave browser, anything that's using Chromium, there'll be an equivalent for Firefox and just right click and click inspect. And then you can see here, we've now got the, the, the DOM, the do, document object model, um, actually displayed visually. And we can go through all these elements and figure out what they are. So for example, if we take something like, um, you know, the, the, the salary, we can see that it's in this salary, it's in a salary snippet, a div with a class of salary snippet in a span, in a span. We can see that the salary text is actually this 45 to 50,000. So to give you an example, um, we can then take this same soup element, we can say, soup.find, we can do, uh, so let's say this is the class name here, right? So let's do the class name one here. So you have a span, you know we have a span, and we know our class is gonna be salary text. Now you can see here we've been able to extract that. So we could say text, and then we could do, we could say salary text, for example. And once we have the salary text, we still have the div element, so we can just do text, or we can do get text. And you'll see we also have the new line, so we could also do dot strip, and now we have something that we can work with. So let's say salary text cleaned, and then from here, 
let's say we wanted to really clean the data, we could also um, specifically look for a reference point after numbers. So let's say uh, we're going to do dot replace and we're going to say a year with nothing, for example. And then we can also split the data based upon this. Now we have two individual lists. Uh, and then we could, for example, then say uh, salary text raw, salary numbers raw. Now we have a Python list. We can do something where we can specifically translate this back into integers. So we could say replace the Great British Pounds with nothing. But the reason why this is failing is it's actually a Python list. So let's take the same Python list that we already had and go for item in this list. We're going to create a list comprehension. And inside that, we'll just put our method like this. So you now see that we can replace those. And we can also uh, basically convert these to, uh, we'll also replace the, uh, the commas with nothing. And we can now, after this, change these items back to floats. Right, so now we can do stuff like if we have if we import numpy, we can do np.mean, for example, on the numbers here. So you now see that we can find the mean. So the reason why we're doing some um, data extraction and data cleaning is to just get you familiar with the fact that the data will be dirty when you extract it from a HTML page, and you will need to do some cleaning. And that's going to be a lot of your job if you're spending doing, you know, data pipelines for data engineering and data science. Um, so I thought I'd just give you a quick example as to like how you would go about potentially cleaning the salary data. Now, going back to our original point of you can also find uh, the elements by their ID. So as well as using something like, you know, div, for example, uh, you can see here we've also got this one uh, where you can use ID. And then we could, for example, do accessibility banner. So we can also use the ID, which is, hold on, as well as being able to search for elements with class name, it's also possible to use the element ID. As well as also using class names, we can also use the element ID. So for example, if we do soup.find and then we do like div, you can see here we have this one with an accessibility banner. So if we do uh, like a dictionary like this, and then we can put ID is equal to, and then we can do like accessibility banner. You'll now see that we get back that specific example. So it's also possible to not only use uh, CSS classes, but also CSS IDs. Okay, great. So moving on, we have this URL. Uh, let's have a look at this in the browser. So we're looking at a specific business intelligence engineer. And we have all these pieces of text, like, you know, the skills, the responsibilities, the objective, you know, how much a year they're looking for, et cetera, et cetera. So what we want to do is we want to extract the title tag. So let's, let's firstly, let's just get this job URL and we're going to say uh, requests.get URL response. And then we can see our status code here. We can see that's 200. So we know we've got the page. Uh, after this, what we're then going to do is just do, uh, we're going to make a new beautiful soup object like this. And we're going to pass in the response.content and use a html.parser. Now we can use, for example, uh, soup.find uh, or etc. We can also use, if we wanted the title, we could do title is equal to soup.title. Okay, cool. Or we could, for example, extract the text. So we could do soup.text. Uh, and we could even strip this text, which cleans it up a little bit, but you can still see that we're getting new lines. Uh, so we could also um, even like replace new lines, for example, uh, with nothing. So we could take like a new line and replace that as well. Now you'll see uh, we've also got some other characters that we need to get rid of as well or uh, to deal with. So you could do some encoding or decoding uh, to deal with that. Um, yeah. And then we're moving on now to, okay, so we can know how to extract like a single element using either 
you know, like uh, one of soup's commands or using like the uh, CSS ID or class name. But what about extracting multiple types of HTML elements? Like how do we do this? How can we, you know, extract all the divs, for example? And this can be quite useful if you want to extract, you know, questions and answers on a HTML page if you're building schema, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, one way that you can do this is by using the soup.findall. So if we do, uh, for example, the, the most common one is probably div or span. You can see we now have, instead of one result, we have a list of a length size of 382 divs. So this can be quite good and you can still use all your standard methods. So for example, you could do like this and you now see there's no spans with a class of text. Um, and the other way that you can also write this is you can do an at dictionary and you can do class um, and you can also do, yeah, etc. So you can do test here, and that would be the same uh, syntax, like the same as this, basically. Um, but yeah, so that's a really good way that you can do that. So let's say, for example, we wanted to extract every single paragraph on the text we uh, from the web page. We would just do something like soup.findall, and then we would just put in the P. And you can see here we have no paragraph. So maybe like in this example, let's do divs. Um, and then we get back a list of uh, divs. So let's make, actually let's do span. Right, so you say list of spans. But we don't necessarily want to get back the raw HTML, like you can see here if we look inside these Python lists. At the moment we have like spans, etc., etc. So we can look at like one of them, you know, and we can see this is like, you know, some text, etc. So we can basically just go for span in list of spans. We can get all the spans back, and then we can do got get get text. And then you'll see here that some of the spans don't, for example, have anything like these empty strings. So what we can do is we can set we can even say, okay, right, so if the span text exists, then give me the span.text. And what this is basically doing, it's saying, look, get the text of everyone. And if there is not an empty string, then get the text of it, basically. And we could even do ones where we uh, replace, you know, like the new lines, or we do strip. So we could do strip like this, and we do replace on new lines with nothing. You now see we've started to clean the data a, a lot better. Like there's obviously some bits that we could clean up, but yeah, generally, generally we're getting there. So let's say text. Cool. Um, so now that we know how to extract like text from multiple CSS elements, let's move on to how to web scrape multiple web pages. So obviously you'll just need a Python list or like a sitemap XML file that you'll download, and then you'll create your Python list. And you're going to need uh, to start with a list um, where you'll store all your results and then you can do something like for URL in URLs. And if we just print URL to start with, you can see we obviously have these three individual URLs. So the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the request, uh, get the response of every web page. So if we say uh, requests.get URL and we'll, we'll save the response here like this. Right, so that does three web pages we just got the response for. Now we're going to say if the status code is equal to 200, then pass the web page. So we can say if response.status code is equal to 200, we're going to then create a beautiful soup object. And we're going to pass in the response.content like we did before. And we'll also pass in a html.parser. Now, what we can do now is, so now we are creating three individual beautiful soup objects in a loop. We could, for example, say, extract the title tags of every page. So we could then go uh, results.append, and we could get soup.title. If we now print the results, you'll now see that we get three individual titles. We could also get the text, for example, rather than specifically just getting the HTML. So if we now look, so now we have the text for three individual pages, which is really, really cool. So you could obviously add as many elements uh, that you needed to, and you could even create a data frame from this. I think it'd be really cool if I actually showed you like, okay, let's get the title tag, but then let's also look at how we can see whether or not a keyword exists in a HTML page. 
and doing that for a range of different um you know different certainties so like is it in the h1 tag is it in the h2 tag is it in the h3 tag h4 tag etc or is it in the html content at all um, and this can be really good from an spo point of view because obviously if you can tell like whether a keyword is in the html page you can compare that to google search console data and you can build up you know a google sheet with the discrepancies of where keywords are not necessarily in um, so it can be quite useful. The first thing is I'm gonna say, okay, well, I've got this keyword called understanding data, and I kind of want to know, like, um, is it actually in the HTML, etc. I'm gonna paste in this code, and I'm gonna walk through it line by line so you really understand it. So the first thing is we're just gonna have this empty dictionary, right? And we have our keyword here. Um, and then we're gonna do what we did before, where we just loop over every URL and we create a new key in the dictionary and we just set everything, like is it in the title or is it in the HTML to be false? We get the response like we did before, and then we say if the spot response code is 200, if the page exists and we can query it and get a response back, then we'll build a beautiful soup um, parser and we'll take the, the HTML text and we'll lower case it so if there was like understanding data, but maybe it was in uh, lowercase, you know, we're making sure that we're normalizing what we're searching for um, before we actually search, which means we're gonna get more matches. And, you know, if one thing was in uppercase in the HTML and the keyword we're searching for is in lowercase, we're gonna normalize against that to make sure that they're both the same. Um, and then for example, we'll extract the title and then we'll say if the keyword, so if our keyword understanding data dot lower, that actually is this, is in the title then set that specific url um, in the dictionary set the title key of that to be true and we'll also do another search for if the keyword in clean html text so if the if the keyword exists in the html text at all you know it could be in h1 it could be in a paragraph or in a div div text um, then also set that to be true and then basically what this will do is it will go through and it will loop over and create three individual keys at the top with all the URLs you have. And then you've got this sort of Boolean search in, in a range of different things. And you could do, for example, you could extract all of the um, all of the H1s, for example, by doing this. Um, or you could extract all of the H2s, for example. And you could loop over every single H1 or every single H2, etc., cetera, um, to be able to figure out, you know, do they exist in any of the H1s or in any of the H2s? So you can see here we've just done the title and the HTML to start with. So for example, this page, uh, we can see that it doesn't exist in the title. Um, however, it does exist in the HTML. Uh, and the same is true for all these, all of the URLs. Um, so it's actually quite easy for us to be able to do that. Um, and this can kind of be extended. So if you'd like to do it with like, you know, maybe 30 or 50 URLs, um, we could also do something where, you know, like we pass in a list of things that we're specifically looking to, um, you know, rather than writing out these if statements separately, we could actually just go, you know, for like loop over the data that we had, you know, like, so we'd had like the, the title, etc., And then like the key that we want to then change or update. And then we could do that, you know, loop over every key and, and the data associated with that and, and, and change the item name, right, which is the key. Um, so if it existed in, you know, like the clean HTML, we go through our first iteration of the loop and if it's in the data, which is in this case is the clean HTML, we then update the item name and the item name being is in HTML and then we'd set that to true. So it's a good way of being able to create a dictionary without having to, to do lots of individual if statements. Um, and then the final thing that I think is really cool is that we can also create a pandas data frame from this. Um, so for example, if we like do like, so we just can create an empty data frame like by doing master data frame pd dot data frame. And then you'll see here, if we look at this, um, it's, it's an empty data frame at the moment, but we have all access to all of Python pandas data frame operations and functions, etc. Um, so we can do something where we do master data frame dot from dict. And we had the um, URL dict from before. And you'll see at the moment, we're getting this kind of structure where we have that Boolean search um, across in title and in HTML. Now we can orient this either in, I think it's the column way. Columns is the default like we have here, but we can also do this as well. So we can do orient is index. And then that means we get, uh, you know, the index being the, the top level key, which is what we had before. Um, so we can just reassign this by doing master DF like this. And then we can even drop the index altogether 
So we can drop the index of URLs by doing reset index. This is actually keeping the index, but kind of making it as an additional column. And then we can uh, set in place equals true, which means that the data, data frame will, will actually update without us having to reassign it back to master DF. So you can see here, and then we can just do rename columns equals index URL. There we go. Okay, so yeah, so then we can update using master DF dot rename columns using index HTML. And you can either do reassignment like this, or you can, for example, do in place is equal to true like we had before. So I'll just do that. Now, if we look, we now have our URL and whether the keyword um, that we were searching for is in the title or is in the HTML. And we could have also added, for example, the keyword um, to this dictionary as well uh, to give it the context, right? If we were doing multiple keywords, you could have done something like, uh, you know, keyword is equal to keyword, right? And then you'd have also got, if we now rerun this, we go back down here, uh, you'll see after this is done finishing, we've also put in the keyword context. You know, if you were doing multiple keywords, you maybe want to have a for loop above that. Uh, and then you could look at, you know, one URL against many keywords in a flattened data frame. Okay, cool. So we have um, an ability to do some Boolean search on a HTML page to see whether it's in the title tag or um, in the HTML content at all. And we've been doing some normalization of that by lowercasing both the HTML and also the title tag. Um, what's really cool about pandas is you can just, once you've done your data cleaning and you've done your feature engineering, you can specifically just save directly to a CSV or even um, push it into Google Sheets. Uh, so in our example, I'll just say uh, save data csv and i'm going to set index equals false which means i won't get these additional columns on the left hand side when i save it and that's simple that's that's basically it you know um so hopefully this tutorial was useful for you it gave you a good introduction to web scraping um specifically how you can find single elements multiple elements how you can scrape multiple web pages um, and also not only that but also thinking about how you can clean the data how you can transform it and getting it into a pandas data frame so that you can do further data manipulation on it and saving it from there maybe into bigquery or into um like a csv file or even as well as that pushing it to google sheets